نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created many creations and out of them made superior the humankind. And for the guidance of the humankind and through it the guidance of all the other creations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent many prophets. All of the prophets that were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of them were humans. None of the prophets was ever a jinn or a, an angel. All of them came from the humankind. All of them were men and all of them were humans. But their nubuwwat or their prophethood extended beyond humanity. Their prophethood extended to the jinn kind, as we have learned about Prophet ﷺ, that there was a group of jinn that came to the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ, they told them that we have heard you reciting the Quran, and then the Prophet ﷺ guided them. Similarly, the Prophet ﷺ and all the prophets are a prophet for the Malaika as well. In the, in the world of the angels, they are also prophets. And out of the billions and billions of human beings that have come and passed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected only a few. So the first thing to be remembered about nubuwwat or prophethood is that it is something that we call wahhabi, something that is granted, something that is given. It is not kasabi, which means something that could be earned. So whoever became a prophet, they only became a prophet because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them. It was none of their doing, it was none of their merits or none of their hard work that caused them to become a prophet. Every single prophet was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one basic purpose. And that basic purpose was including the Prophet ﷺ, the basic purpose was and is that humankind, because of the impressions that they take from their surroundings, because of their being affected by the surroundings, they tend to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They tend to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rather than becoming slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they become slaves to multiple other things. For example, some of them may become slaves to their desires. Some of them may become slaves to wealth or the constant effort of acquiring wealth. Many others may become slaves to other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of them may, may be even so stupid that they become slaves to things that have no control over them. For example, the people who worship the sun or the fire. The sun in of itself is following the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cannot do anything to them. But they chose to become slaves to the sun. Or some of them chose to become slaves to other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, snakes and whatnot. When the Prophet ﷺ was sent, this series of nubuwwat, of prophethood, was sealed. And according to Hazrat Muhaddithin, 
one purpose of every Nabi being sent from Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam was to prepare the world for the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa To prepare the people and to tell them ahead of time that there is going to be a final Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming. And about Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Hazrat Muhaddisin and Mufassirin have written that his only purpose of sending into this world was to prepare the world for the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is said in the Quran about Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam that he told the people, he told his people that I give you good news about a Nabi who is going to come after me and his name is going to be Ahmad. So my dear respected brothers, when we talk about our deen, one purpose, one thing that we should have in mind is that the sole purpose of our deen, the sole purpose of sending all these Anbiya and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to, to make this purpose reach to its completion is that we should become slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we should become Muslimin. We should become those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the way, one clarification on the side. Some people have created this confusion that Islam means peace. That is Salam, not Islam. Islam, the only meaning of Islam that I have read in books is to submit. A lot of times people will confuse you that Islam is peace. Yes, Islam teaches peace. Yes, the teachings of Islam are inherently peaceful. But to say that the, this specific word Islam means peace, that is utterly wrong. Anybody who knows the basic Arabic will tell you that it does not mean peace. It is to submit, to give in to the order of someone, to become slaves to someone. And that is that we become slaves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We give in to the will and order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one thing to be mentioned here is that because the purpose of all the prophets to be sent into this world was to prepare the world for the prophet, for the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa it is a rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has been sent and when his teachings have become apparent and when his teachings have reached everyone, then to follow any other Nabi, apart from the Prophet ﷺ, any Nabi of the past, they may be true Anbiya in their time, is not acceptable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people of the book, if they exist now, and that's a big if, because most people that call them Christians or Jewish, they do not actually follow the Bible or the book that the Jew Jewish people are supposed to follow, the Torah. They have given up that book for the most part and they follow, they basically they follow their own desires. So their deen is their desire, not the Bible, not the Torah, not the Zabur for that matter. So to find a true Ahl Kitab, Ahlul Kitab, to find a person who is truly a, from among the people of the book is very hard in the first place but even if we find someone like that still they are not acceptable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will not have salvation on the day of judgment to have salvation on the day of judgment after coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after coming of the Quran the one criterion that has to be fulfilled is not only to believe in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our in our one of the weekend classes that we have, there was a hypothetical question raised that somebody believes and follows the teachings of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, but also believes and respects the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam to be the last prophet. But if they do not follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam, they will still not find heaven in the in the hereafter. So Nabuwat of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam believe in the Risalat and the prophethood of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam and in the finality of his prophethood is not only restricted in having an intellectual belief in him being the last prophet but also believing that only following him is accepted in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were all the prophets that went before him were not Nabi or not true prophets no they were of course true prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but to believe in someone and to follow someone are two different things we believe all of them to be true 
guided prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sharia, the code of conduct, the way of living that they presented before the people was true and correct. But after coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their sharia or their code of conduct, whatever they brought, has been cancelled and the only thing to be followed is the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we believe in all other anbiya but we only follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is part of our aqeedah. If we have defect in this aqeedah, we are questioning our iman. We are questioning, we are putting our iman in jihadi. On the opposite side, after coming of the Prophet sallallahu this is about the people who were prophets before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were all rightly guided, righteous prophets. It is part of our belief that they were rightly guided prophets. If anyone claims any of the properties of prophethood after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what are the key properties of, a, of being a prophet? Somebody, a man who is sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, he's chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, he's sinless, does not commit any sins. Does not commit any sins to begin with. It's not like they committed sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them. No. They are made in such a way that they do not commit any sins. Number three, that in their time, their sharia is to be followed. This is the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His sharia, his, his teachings are to be followed. And it's necessary. It's part of iman. These things are elaborated just now. But if someone tries to prove any of these things, any of these things, for anyone apart from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are also becoming kuffar. They are also going out of the fold of, the, of Islam. And this is the case, this was the case of right after, and, and this has been happening in the past, this will keep on happening, but the, it is the duty of the Muslims to know these people and to guard against themselves, against those people, guard themselves against those people. One example was right after the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu In fact, this person, it comes in narrations, actually came and met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His name was Musaylima. He came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and requested him, requested the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make this person, this guy, this person, a vicegerent, a khalifa, or a somebody who's going to lead the Muslims after the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he is going to be a prophet, an ummati prophet. So he's going to follow the sharia of the Prophet, ﷺ, but also going to claim his prophethood. The Prophet ﷺ did not accept it. When after, he did not make his claims clear, after the demise of the Prophet, ﷺ, when his fitna, his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his claim of prophethood was on the rise, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq immediately departed an army and to quell this fitna, to go and take care of him. If I remember correct, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq did not even wait for the arrangements of the funeral of the Prophet to be made and departed this army to take care of these people. These examples will keep on rising in every single period. People will be coming and they will be putting forth different claims just to gain worldly status. One very good example of such people in, in this present time is the fitna of Qadiyaniya. The people who are Ahmadi. The people who believe in a person who was raised in India and he claimed to be first Actually, if you read about the history of him, he actually first wanted to claim to be a god, but then he realized that that is, that is not going to hold any value in the eyes of anyone. So he reduced his claim to prophethood. Then when he found that even that is not going to work, he claimed to become an Ummati Nabi, that I am also an Ummati and also a Nabi. Then he claimed to become Jesus Christ who is promised and all of his claims died with him in his grave. Neither could he prove his prophethood, nor could he prove his being Jesus Christ or the one who's going to come before the end of this world who's been promised by the Prophet ﷺ, we call him Masih Ma'ud. But unfortunately, 
in this world that we are living in, there are people who still believe in him. And there are people who call themselves, they do that and they call themselves Muslims. As Muslims, it is our duty to know very clearly that these people have no relationship with Islam. These people have no relationship with Islam. These are actually hurting and damaging the Prophethood of the Prophet by their false claims and by believing in a person who made false claims. So my dear respected brothers, sometimes we confuse these people's people when they have a very strong claim and they'll come to you with very good faces, with smiling faces, good akhlaq, and they will tell you that, see, we also say La ilaha illallah. We also say Muhammad Rasulullah. So they also say Kalima. But in detail, if you go in detail, they have very, very misconstrued beliefs. These people have to be declared kuffar. We have to realize, we have to understand, if we do not think that they are non-Muslims, our own Iman is in jeopardy. Our own Iman is in question. Hazrat ulama Ikram have gone so far as to, if somebody claims to be a prophet, even to ask them for a dalil of their prophethood, for an evidence of their prophethood, is also kufr. Because we, should, we have to have such a firm belief in the, in, the, in, the, in the finality of the Prophet of the Prophet that we should not even ask, we should not even dare to ask anyone for the proof of this claim. Because right away when they make this claim, this claim is false to begin with. So my dear respected brothers, sometimes these people say we, have, we recite La ilaha illallah, we recite Muhammad Rasulullah, we claim to be Muslims. And some so-called scholars who are all, who, who on, the, on the outset, seem to be very all-encompassing and trying to embrace everyone. They say that when they are claiming to be Muslims, we cannot declare somebody who is claiming to be a Muslim, a non-Muslim. If somebody does not believe in Islam and claim to be Muslim, we will call them non-Muslims. By a hundred times, a million times, we will call them non-Muslims. Just by if somebody comes and says that we are a Muslim, they don't become a Muslim. They have to have the key aqaid correct. They have to have their creed of the faith correct. They have to have their iman correct. That is the criterion against which they will be judged. So if they call themselves Muslim, and if they want to call themselves a sect of Islam, so they are Muslims, but they are just a different sect, which differ in a few peripheral, peripheral things. Remember, a sect is created when the key aqaid are the same. Belief in Allah, belief in the oneness and the unity of Allah, belief in the finality and the trueness of the Prophet of Muhammad belief in the hereafter, belief in the malaika, belief in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, belief in all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, belief in, belief in taqdeer, in predestination by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, belief in the day of judgment. When these key aqaid are true, and then there is difference in details and understanding of these aqaid, then they are still Muslim, but they will be called sects or firqa. But if they do not believe in the finality of the Prophet wasallam, or for that matter, if anyone does not believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or for that matter, if somebody does not believe in Jannah or Jahannam, paradise and hell being physical things, they will not be called a Muslim. They will not be called a Muslim. They will not be called a, a sect among the mainstream Muslims. No. Sects are created when details, when there is difference in details. Sects are not created when there is difference in the key aqaid. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us guard ourselves and our iman against the fitan that are arising in this world and in these times. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the ones who make an effort to at least know our basics correctly. At least know our aqaid correctly. If you do not know them fully well, we we have no claim on Jannah. Because the Prophet through the teachings of the Prophet through the teachings of the Quran, we learned that the first criterion is to have sound aqaid, sound belief. <coughs> if you have that, and then if you are deficient in a'mal or in actions or deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, will compensate for these deeds if he so wills. 
But if there is deficiency in aqaid, if deficiency in iman, you will be called a non-believer. Non-believers have no claim to Jannah, no claim to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the right path. Brothers who have not prayed.